We are live. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to RVing in New England on this fine Wednesday night or wherever you're watching or wherever time you're watching. Uh, John, how are you today? I'm great. And um, you know what? It's an exciting day. There's a whole bunch of new stuff that we're going to talk about tonight. It's, it's kind of a totally different show because usually we talk about, camp well, we're going to talk about camping, but we're going to talk about new innovations. And that's the thing that's got me excited about. Uh, I've been on the edge of my seat trying to figure out what is Winnebago hiding from us? What are they going to uh, <laughs> let us know? And then when I saw it today, I said, wow, that just when you think they've got every aspect of the RV market covered, they come up with another niche. And uh, this is really cool. And I know that our audience is going to really enjoy it. Yeah, wherever they are. I don't see anybody joining in yet. That's fine. Yeah, they'll um, join. But so, we should, should tell people who, who our sponsors are tonight. Yes. Our sponsor tonight is Lee's Family Trailer on Route 302 in Windham, Maine. A big Winnebago dealer here in New England. And a big uh, nerd to dealer. So we appreciate Dan Crafty and his team uh, being a sponsor. And, and look at that. The first one to join is Dante. Dante... Your neighbor down the street is a sponsor tonight. So if you haven't got down to the Lee's family trailer sales yet, you better get down there. But it well, Bob, the in, in order to let people know where Lee's family trailer sales is, we should say it's in Windham, Maine, which is just a stone's throw from Portland, Maine. That's right. Is just a stone's throw from Boston and is right off Interstate 95. So people can be living anywhere in New England and go there. But you know what? They can live on 95, come all the way up from Richmond, Virginia. They can come all the way up yeah. from uh, South, South Carolina, Florida, et cetera. Look at the way, look at this crowd. They must have just the opened the doors. The crowd is jumping in. So we will, let's let's do this right away. Let's. Look at, wait a minute. We have, Bob, hold on here. Hold on. I'm running the show here. Bob, okay. look, look at who our audience is. We go from Maine to Florida. Talk about I-95. Dante's in Maine. Riney's in Massachusetts. The Polks are in North Carolina. Walter's in Massachusetts. Convoy, and Andy Park is down in Orlando. So we go and the entire route of I-95, which if we hadn't told you yet, I-95 is the highway that Lee's family trailer sales is located right nearby. That you are right, my friend. So let's do this. Let's take our sponsor down and leave it. Leave it to me. Leave it to me to support our sponsors. You do the our guest tonight, Brian Hazelton, the senior VP of Winnebago Brands RVs. Welcome to RVing in New England, Brian. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me on. And, and we should say, ladies and gentlemen, Brian is not like a regional vice president. He's not a, an assistant sales manager. Brian comes from the mothership where they make these babies out in right. Iowa. <laughs> so he's like well, only a couple steps away from the throne that Mike is sitting on. Well, that, that, yeah. <laughs> let's let's take a couple of seconds, Brian, and give him a little bit of your back. I know you've been at Winnebago for four years, but maybe just tell him about your Winnebago life and your new promotion in September. Hey, no, thanks. Um, I've been at Winnebago, uh, like the guy said, a little bit over uh, four and a half years now. Uh, came in from outside the industry. so. Uh, you know, I had been in a, uh, a Brave probably in 1975, and my dad tried to blow us all up when he tried to turn the furnace on. So I have a, a pretty fond memory there. But, um, yeah, Mike. Uh, Mike 35 Gaffney, years ago, Brian. Was, I know. Thanks. <laughs> That's all um, but, uh, no, Mike, uh, Mike Happy joined Winnebago about five years ago and uh, was looking to build out the management team. And I got a phone call and started talking to Mike and, and kind of seeing his vision around this amazing brand and um yeah it took uh didn't take long to, to get excited about it and so now i'm uh i was started out as responsible for the motorhome business um and then about a month and a half two months ago i was asked to take on expanded responsibilities for our winnebago tovals business which is in middlebury um, indiana yep. and so i've been uh, learning the tovals business um at a, at a pretty good pace you know obviously with COVID, it's a little harder to, uh, to be in as many places as you'd like to be, uh, but really enjoy it and just have had an absolute blast um, learning the RV industry around the product, you know, making a lot of changes. Um, we had a big event today, I'm sure we'll talk about, 
here in a little while, um, but introduced uh, new products to our dealers earlier this morning and then to the uh, general public uh, this afternoon. Um, so it's been, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I grew up, um, I spent a lot of time at Detroit Diesel, so about 12 years in the diesel engine business. Spent some time around construction equipment and uh, and other things you can get your hands around. So this has been, um, this is just such an emotional product for people. And it's it's so cool to be part of something where you're, you know, you're enabling people to, to do the fun things that they like to do with their family and friends and you uh, and do it with a great brand like Winnebago. So really excited about what we've got going on and, and uh, yeah. more, more to keep learning. Brian, yeah. one, of, one of the interesting aspects of your appointment as well as Mike's is that it kind of turned heads in the industry that they were bringing in people from outside the industry. And um, obviously things have turned out quite well because Winnebago Industries has diversified from just, you know, motorhomes and, well, they were primarily motorhomes. Primarily motorhomes, about 93%. Yep. With, with not much towables and, um, you know, through acquisitions and mergers and, uh, uh, and new thinking, it really, um, you know, I was, I was watching the, the um, video of the new product lineup and I see number one, Winnebago is not referring to class B's as class C's, but the camper vans. Is there a story behind that? No, really just, you know, terminology. We, we stay very, very close. Russ Garfin, who leads the product teams, you know, in those areas, um, we stay very close to that customer group and, and try and, you know, stay, stay in line with them from a terminology standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think, I think one of the things that, that I Mike really. did really, I think one of the things Mike did really well was a, there's Russ, was a, um, a good balance between industry talent and some new people. Um, especially when you look at, you know, the talent level at Grand Design, you know, when we purchased that business, sure. uh, John Clark and his team, you know, a lot of good. And quite honestly, for me, um, and you look at the Newmar acquisition with Matt Miller and his team between people like Don Clark and Matt Miller to have those kind of resources for me um, coming in where, yeah, do I know business? Yes, but I don't know the RV industry. And so to have a lot of those types of individuals, um, that's been a lot of the magic with the, with the team that, that Mike's put together. Well, yeah, it is a great team. Uh, let me tell you about our team because we, we we have this fantastic audience that just shows up every Wednesday night. Uh, Dante's up in Windham, Maine. He's a consumer. Ryan Lieberg is here with uh, Bradford RV. Bradford was one of the early Winnebago dealers back in the uh, 60s. They, they were back then. We're trying to convince them they should pick it up again. Mark Polk is joined from RV Education 101. Um, Walter Swenson, our resident engineer. Uh, if if we get a technical question at all, it'll come from Walter. We'll just, he'll answer it. We're going to make him answer. He'll, he'll answer. He'll <laughs> answer. So don't don't worry about that. Uh, Jim Convoy's on from New England RV Roof, and Andy Parr, who you might remember growing up as the gadget guru at NBC Today with Wood Scott, and is he back with Matt Lauer? But Andy's down in Florida. He's a good friend and contributes a lot to the show. Um, Nick Wright is one of our dealers down in Connecticut, Unlimited RV, and he rents and starts, he's starting to sell some units. Nick, you got to look at the uh, Winnebago rental units next time you add to your fleet. And Gail Hogan's on. She's with the Rhode Island State Director for Good Sam. Tony Barthel. Hey, Tony. Uh, Tony's the happy camper, and he's been doing uh, – Product reviews. Just started doing product reviews for RV, um, RVTravel.com. And, and we should uh, say that the happy camper that he is, not to be confused with that stuff that you throw in the septic tank. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing a nice job on the reviews there, Tony. Uh, Eric, tell us Eric's back, and I got to look at the big screen. Lake, Lake Air Campground in Charleston, South Carolina. Well, you should have the Mark and Don Polk down to your campground because they're in North Carolina, so maybe you should do that. Estelle Drew is a good fan from New Market, New Hampshire. Scott Nichols from Marshfield. Andy says, right out the gate, a question for Brian. Watch the presentation today. Well done. I especially like the direction you're going with the more home-like interiors. Here's my question. Seems the RV industry shares one common problem. Poor quality components. It seems like all RV manufacturers purchase from the same suppliers, and most suppliers seem to be providing some poor quality components. 
what is Winnebago doing to break this trend and to keep your owners from having to frequent dealerships for service? Well, that's an industry issue, but Brian, you want to just uh, have an answer for that? Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a great question, and and one of the advantages on the motorhome side, you know, that we have is the vertical integration in Forest City, Iowa. Yeah. So we have nine different verticals, everything from aluminum extrusion to steel stamping to uh, stitchcraft, where we produce soft goods and furniture. Um, we have our own plastics operation, our own tank. We can build our own uh, tanks, so we can maximize the the fit to the tank to the chassis. Um, so that is an advantage for us is having those verticals. And another way that that plays out well is, especially during the COVID you know, time frame, the supply chain has been really difficult. And the fact that we uh, control more of that supply chain um, by having the verticals has helped. Um, but we do buy from some of the same suppliers that others do on certain components um, and just really trying to continue to work with them from a quality standpoint. But I think when you looked at some of the products today, if you if you saw the door on the new journey, um, yeah, I saw that. Saw the door, the door on the new view in Navion. I mean, we've gone over to Europe um, to find other suppliers um, that build that door on the journey's got two hitching points on it now, a top and a bottom. It's not just in the center of the door. So when you start talking about quality and, and noise, noise reduction, you know, water reduction, things like that, um, we are trying to to look at new and better solutions. But I, I'd say. Andy, the, the vertical integration is a big help for us. Um, and that's something, you know, we want to find out where can we do more of that? Um, because we, as, as Winnebago, um, I believe we get held to a higher standard on quality in terms of what people expect and then how You've we respond. Yep, yep. Yeah. And Andy, uh, a good project for you when you get out on the road yourself, uh, I would suggest that you go out to Forest City because I've been to I've been through many, and I've been covering the industry for 25 years, but I've been through many manufacturing plants. And and as you know, when I had my imaging company, that's what we sold to is manufacturing engineering companies like Boeing and General Motors and Raytheon. And I was blown away with the Winnebago. I'm not saying that because Brian's on tonight, but I during my tour, which uh, Dwayne Cyrus, who used to be our rep and heads up their training now, uh, Dwayne gave me a one-on-one -on -one tour of seven of the buildings. And, and my comment to him when I got done, Brian, was if I was Winnebago, and I know you can't do this, but I would force every salesperson who's selling Winnebago to Take go to our city and, and walk through these factories because they are not like anything you're going to see in the RV industry. In fact, the one that's up there is new, the new factory in Middlebury, Indiana, where they build the towables. And that was, that was amazing and the technology that you built in and the fact that that they build their own components and that they can rebuild them if necessary uh you know 45 years later to, to put something on a motorhome or a trailer that's that's a distinctly different part of the business uh let me jump in on for joan uh tony says i am loving that new echo that is really well done but i wonder if in the towables there are thoughts of doing non-slide models like the lance it's an interesting question. You ever come up? Yeah, I think, you know, with the towable business right now, um, we're really taking a look. We've, we've had a lot of success around the travel tread of the new hike. Um, a little bit like a Revel, like an Echo, actually, from a, a more off the grid, off, off highway type of, of product. Um, we're going through, and again, I'm, I'm, I think, six weeks into the towable business here, so still learning quite a bit. But really um, focusing on the micro mini, the mini product lines, um, and then on our, our Voyage product on the higher end. Um, but we're going to, the mini product line came out with a significant number um, in excess of 10 different floor plans, you know, as we got started um, there. So really, you know, trying to look at that business and getting the products right that we have today and then understanding where else can we go because we do want to grow that business. Um, it's, a, it's a great brand. The team there in Middlebury does a good job. Um, but we feel there's there's a lot more opportunity you know, with that product line and, and to really grow that Winnebago toll wall business. Right. Jerry Plant says, although I don't own one, the name Winnebago is still synonymous with motorhomes. Is that your Winnebago? Is oh oh that's the question he has. He drives a uh, a very almost almost vintage uh, Safari uh, motorhome, and 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 people will say, is that your that that's happened throughout history and. You know, it has, you know, we've um, we've got a great brand. It's it's the Kleenex of, of RVs when you think about it. And, yep. The Xerox um, machine of RVs. 
It is, yeah. No, and we're very, very aware and very, very cognizant of, of that responsibility and the, the duty that we have to continue to fly the W. And it's been interesting. If you look back, um, when I joined Winnebago, you know, one of the conversations we had is, how come there's not a flying W? And it was um, it was funny. We ended up doing a, an agreement with Joe Madden right after he won the World Series for the Cubs. And Joe yep. and his wife, Jay, are lifelong RVers. Um, and actually, the whole reason they got started was they had these two big dogs, and they couldn't put them on an airplane to go between uh, where they live in Florida and out to Arizona for spring training. So they started getting into RVs. And we talked to Joe, and Joe said, I'd love to do it, but you got to put a W on mine. And it was uh, it was it was really interesting. We had gotten away from the flying W, and now if you look at the product, every product we have um, yep. has has the flying. Why not? W. Why not I, have the W? Why would you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's no other company. When you figure all the other companies that have come and gone, um, but Winnebago, even though they weren't always at the top of the heap or or the largest, they're still, I think the most well-known to somebody who even, who knows nothing about the industry. It is, from that yeah, no, absolutely. Now, Walter fact, up, Walter's our resident engineer. Walter brings up, Echo is a nice-looking unit, even if it feels like a UPS truck with the brown. <laughs> wow. Brown. I, I would imagine there's going to be new color. There will be several uh, color schemes available on the X. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because as you get into that product, and we see it a lot with Revel and Travato, um, there's really, you know, one of the customers that already came up during the, the introduction online, is there a delete option for all the graphics? Um, so there, there is this, you know, take, take the names off, take the colors off, take the graphics off, um, a lot with this, with this group, but this is the, uh, yeah, this is the color that we're coming out with. Um, we've had a great response from our dealers on this unit. Um, fantastic response. Um, and I heard we already had two retails sold this afternoon at, at three o'clock in the afternoon. We had two dealers that already took orders from customers. So, no, oh. we're excited about it. We're excited to have the all-wheel drive chassis. Ford's a great partner for us. They have a great service network uh, throughout the country. And um, it's it's really an interesting when you see it up close. Um, the footprint is not as as big as it appears. Um, it's actually narrower than the Travato, uh, the the Ram chassis, by about four inches. Um, so it's it's going to be we're excited about it. Narrower than the Travato. Yeah, narrower than the Travato is. So from the back door, do you from the back pat from the excuse me from the passenger side door, you don't bump it out much like you do on the view in Navion. Uh no, it's it's narrower. It's it's yeah, a straight well, shot. Really, what we really tried to do is to give people a a class B experience, but then give them the storage. So now you've got the outdoor storage here. You've got this gear garage in back, which. You know, as we travel and, and Russ Garfin spends a ton of time over in Europe, you know, that was one of the trends we were starting to see were these big areas that you could, you know, bikes are the best one, right? Your expensive bikes hanging on the back of your of your Winnebago. People want to put it inside, lock it up, skis, golf clubs, surfboards. Um, a lot of voice of customer work went into that of people saying, just give us a space, make it big, give us some latches so we can tie it down. We want, to, we want power back there, and we want it to be lit up. Well, you know, Brian, it's interesting that you bring that up about the bikes because I just got an e-bike not too long ago, you know, the elect, the battery bikes. Yep. And, um, you know, they'll go 20 miles an hour, and I can, you know, you can get 40 miles out of one battery charge, but they cost anywhere between $2,500 and four or $5,000. Now, the big problem is um, having them exposed on the back of an RV for theft purposes. Again, you can put a chain on it, but the fact that you're looking at it is very insightful because the audience that is buying the bikes is the same. It's, it's an RV audience. They're 60 plus. Yep. And, um, you know, they're not 25 years old with the racing bike. So um, if it was Russell that came up with, you know, let's figure out a way to put bikes in this, then Russell deserves a pat on the back because bikes you can't go look at next time you go into a into a walmart or a costco or whatever go to the bike department the racks are empty there are oh, none no absolutely are, you cannot buy a bicycle today for an adult yeah hey uh, brian explain the awning configuration on the echo i thought that was kind of unique yeah so we've got you know the traditional awning on what looks like the right side of the picture that um, that's up on the screen yeah. But around, um, you know, starting at the midpoint of the rear and then wrapping around to the to the driver's side is something we call a bat wing awning. 
and we partnered with a company out of South Africa, um, and they have they have made these awnings um, for people that are out in the you know the real back backwoods in the desert um, for a number of years, and it is an extremely simple uh, product to deploy, and the idea is you know typically when you pull the RV and oftentimes the best scenery is in the back. And that's where you you want to spend your time if you're if you're putting your bikes or working in the gear garage you're going to be at the rear of the unit so what can we do to really enhance the amount of, of outdoor livable space so that's how we uh that's how we came up with it so it's a uh, it's a it's a product that we are sourcing it's um from a windproof storm proof it's extremely durable how does um, it attach to the to the unit brian it's attached to the left side so the driver's side of the unit um it's a, it looks like it's, it's lower, you know, it's not up on the roof line as, not, as yeah. the, the portable regular awnings are. Um, but yeah, it just mounts to the side and you, uh, you unzip the compartment, it, it deploys out and sets up literally in, in a couple minutes. So it's not mechanical. No, no, no. Nope. So does that, um, eliminate, uh, or is it, or is no slide planned for that? particular model? Oh, we'll have two floor plans. Um, so there will be one floor plan that does have a slide. Um, the floor plan that you're looking at there, the picture that you've got up does not have a slide. So we'll have uh, two floor plans as we come out to um, in the market with this product. So and one of so one of the units will not have a slide. That's correct. That's, and the that's, one the, the smaller unit will have a pop top option. Yep. So the six twenty two, you know, there are still will have a pop top. The six twenty four will not. The six twenty four will have the slide out. Okay. Pop top that's for right. extra sleeping up top. Yep, exactly. Like the solus? Exactly. Yep. Mm. What does that do? Is there solar on the roof? Yeah, so we can put the solar on top of the pop top. Oh. That's what we do, That's what we do with solus now. Yep. Really? Wow. Yep. Interesting. Andy, Andy's got a whole bunch of questions. Yeah, I was, I was just going to catch up. Andy's got one. Well, he says, does Winnebago have any plans to open regional factory service centers? I ask this. I ask as this model has worked very well for Prevo, and it seems that it would work well in the RV industry. Well, actually, there are some people in the RV industry already doing it. Uh, any ideas on that, on Brian, or any comments? Um, well, today we have a service center in Forest City, Iowa, um, which is uh, which is full from the time the snow melts until the time the snow starts flying. It's been very successful. Um, we did have a service center um, in Junction City, Oregon, um, after the acquisition of the Country Coach property. Um, we closed that facility. Um, earlier this year because the demand simply wasn't wasn't there for it um, it was it was a pretty isolated um, location it, it wasn't really on the way so um, we did not right now um, we're not looking at any other factory service centers we're trying to to really focus on on supporting the dealers, um, the dealers. with the information yeah. that that we can you know getting them the information getting them the parts helping them out technically we have people that are dedicated um, just to dealer support we have a customer care group that deals with consumers, but we also have a dedicated dealer support group. And we're really looking at what we can do um, in terms of technology and tools. Um, spending a lot of money right now on digital, obviously the COVID you know, pandemic pushed that technology. Um, but right now for us, you know, bricks and mortar, probably not uh, top of the list. Um, we are working with a number of dealers on mobile service. You know, we're seeing that become a, a bigger and bigger uh, tool. Um, a lot of collaboration with our, our uh, teammates over at Grand Design in Newmar as well um, as to how Grand Design is a beautiful uh, factory service center, Newmar as well in Napanee. Um, so really trying to coordinate with them. But um, right now we we want to work through and empower the dealer. That's that's really the best way we believe to take care of the customer. Well, we, we like we like to hear that in Nerve Day, and we got plenty of Winnebago dealers up here and we'll take all the Winnebago training. A dealer on the intro. Uh, yeah, we got uh, Walter says, looks like it could be a good rental unit as well for peer to peer rentals. Are you talking about the Echo, uh, Walter? Let me know if you're talking about that. Chris mm -hmm. Andros, what is Chris? Is the own part, co owner and general manager of Hemlock Hill RV down in Connecticut, along with his brother Jason and his sister Michelle. Uh, they do a fantastic job. I don't know, Chris, did you ever sell Winnebago's along the way? They've been down there quite a while. Uh, Nice dealership. Andy, got another one here. What's the weight capacity of the trunk compartment in the Echo? I will have to get back to you on that one. I do not know that. I'll yeah, we'll, we'll figure that one out. Um, 
The pre in the presentation, you stated that the Batwing awning is weatherproof. Does that mean you don't have to pull it in during rain or wind? I don't know. Um, no, it's meant to stay out in rain. You know, wind is going to obviously depend. If it's if it's you know 50 mile an hour winds, you might want to pull it in. I don't know what the rated capacity in terms of the wind is for it, but it is mechanical, so it's not it's not going to have an automatic mechanism to retract it during high winds like some awnings will. Yeah. Okay. But it's, it's purpose built. You know, or this type of application. Okay, I, I want to get another one in here from Chris because yeah. this is an important subject. Chris said, sounds like they are focused on repair event cycle time. Is this the case? And for people, for the consumers that don't know repair event cycle time, that's an initiative that we have in the industry to reduce the amount of time that your unit, from the unit time that it goes into the service order is written until you pick up the unit. It's very complex, very sophisticated, but uh, the manufacturers are on board. And uh, you want to comment on that? Because that, that gets right down to the deal level, Brian. Yeah, no, you, you hit the nail on the head. Um, we we want to get the dealers the right parts at the right time, provide them with the right technical information, get the units in and out of their shops as quick as we can. Um, so that's what that's where our focus is. Um, you know, we have uh, the wiring schematics, the drawings. I mean, we, we do a lot of things the right way. We we often get told, you know, we have too many engineers and we're a little bit slower to market than some of the others. And we're working to get better at that. But our documentation come, really pays out in spades when there is a service event. And um, we continually get, get that feedback from the dealers um, in terms of the strong support from Winnebago. And there's, there's new tools. We've got to do some new things as well. Um, but no, we are absolutely, Chris, trying to reduce the, the, war, the repair cycle time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, it should be pointed out to Andy, I mean, that Andy asked, uh, does it mean you have to pull it in during rain or wind? Well, um, any kind of device that's like a sail should be taken in in the wind. Well, uh, in every RV it takes an air awning in, in the wind. Yeah. Now, now maybe, yeah. maybe you Prevo owners didn't because they got a better thing, but Andy sold his Prevo, so that doesn't count. Uh, Tony says, uh, let's see, talking about the dealer service, Tony says, Service, yeah. No incentive to pay the tax more, even though the retail hourly rate is 13 to 200. Well, we, Every deal is different, Tony. So I'm not going to comment on the hourly rate. I don't. What they pay their employees is their own initiative. Uh, but you know, talking just about money for a second, Brian. What is the price point of that? What what category it's got that's going to fit into? Yeah, the uh, the, the price point on the Echo, um, it'll it'll be from a retail standpoint. I would say 140. It'll sticker at 140. Yeah. In that range, okay. depending on options and how you configure it, there's yeah. there's a number of different configurations between lithium and a gen set and things like that. So the the genesis, is, speaking of that, the genesis of that is it it's between the um, View Navion Vita and the Revel. Yeah, cool. I would I would say um, I would say maybe you know View Navion um, you know Revel. Yeah, it's a it's got it's got the storage that you don't have on the rubble. It's an all-wheel drive system, not a four-wheel drive system, so no transfer case on this. Um, and it's a you know, and, and the Ford chassis, it's a beautiful chassis. Um, you know, we've had the chance to drive it. The EcoBoost engine, the performance is really good. So I think um, I think people are really going to be excited once they get behind it. Um, the ergonomics in that cab, it's a real nice cockpit fit um, up there. We've integrated the and such. In, it's in not a bed up top, uh, right? What's that? It's not a bed over the driver's compartment, right? No. No. Is no. it just open or has it got... Uh, it's, it has storage. It has storage up there. up there. Okay. Yeah. Wow. In, in, ready, in, in talking with our deal is uh, we were all trying to guess what the new product would be. And uh, I mentioned the earlier team was fantastic. We couldn't get anything out of anybody at one of the to try to figure it out. Out but, me last night. But I was I was half right. I, I just had a feeling you were going to come back to the transit in some way because it, it wasn't in the product line and the fuse was good, but it didn't didn't take off. Uh, so the transit, I'm glad to see you building back on that. And I'm sure I'm sure that won't be the last motorhome that Winnebago builds on a transit, right? No, no, they've you know they've obviously got some other products on the transit platform, and we're looking at those now. 
Um, we're going to continue to to focus. You know, the B, the Class B business is growing so fast, um, and we've got a great share of that business. We don't want to go backwards there. But Class C, um, this is a great step for us with Class C gas. And okay. then the journey today. I mean, it's um, it, that is such a beautiful product. Um, let's let's hold, Brian. Let, let's hold that. I'm going to do okay. a quick commercial. Okay. Top brands, top notch service. Find out why folks from all over New England visit Lee's Family Trailer all year long. Camping never ends here, and new units are arriving daily. You heard right, new manufacturers, new floor plans. Home with the $2,000 off new fifth wheels and $1,000 off new towables. You get the rebates. And hear this over 100 motorized are on their way. Always way below MSRP guaranteed. Route 302 Wyndham, the fifth wheel capital of New England. Trailer. You wanted to go to the journey, and I think I have a picture of the journey. That's accessible. Yeah. Oh, gotta get rid of the that baby. <laughs> the ball out there. There we go. Is that the journey? Wow, that's the Forza. That's the Forza. Okay. Okay, here's the journey. Maybe I should have put titles on it. Let the dog do it. Yeah, let's hit the right key. There you go. There we go. There you go. Beautiful coach. Thanks. So paint job. cool paint job. That's a short, journey. short, short uh, wheelbase in that. That's the thirty-four. Yeah, that's uh, we'll have a thirty-six and a forty. Uh, the forty will come out next, um, and those will be the uh, the three floor plans um, that we'll work with on the journey, and then we're going to look. Um, and see where else in the uh, in the diesel market um, we need to spend some time. But we're excited. Yeah, it's been um, it's a uh, it's a really cool platform, common platform. Uh, we did a lot of work with Freightliner. Spent a lot of time on on the ride and drive. Uh, noise was a big focus for us, getting the the interior noise down. That was one of the pieces of feedback we got from the customer groups that we worked with was that our units were loud um, inside. Um, so we've spent a ton of time. There's automotive. Um, Roofing material in here. Um, the the um, the pilot, the co-pilot. It's a it's a more intimate um, cabin configuration. You're not so far spread apart. Um, getting the mirrors up, the, the visibility in there is fantastic. Um, it tapered the front end about uh, the sides come in about three degrees. Tapered the front of it. Um, just has a really really good look to it. Um, the interiors. You know, you guys mentioned earlier about the you know the time or one of the, I think one of the questions was. Um, just on our focus on interior design, trying to get a more residential look. There you go. It's a um, yeah, it turned out really well. Really proud of our team. Um, a lot of a lot of effort um, into this. You can you can see over the driver's compartment area some of the the sound deadening that we've done. There's a cove uh, type ceiling in there as well. Um, really want people to be able to communicate, you know, as they're exploring the country in this unit. But we're really really excited to. To have the journey name back out there, but a complete clean sheet design from a product standpoint. Right, and talk a little bit about Kim and what she adds to the team. She she's just yeah. a fantastic job with the uh, interiors. Yeah, Kim Kim Mann is our um, our manager of interior design, and and Kim joined. I think it's about three years now. The big accomplishment was Kim was we got her to move from Southern California to Minneapolis in February. Um, so that was uh, that was that was the first good accomplishment, but. Kim did a lot of stuff with high-end uh, home renovation and is very, very much focused, you know, on that residential or traditional experience. And um, I had a lot of, when I joined Winnebago four years ago, I've told this story, so I'm not, I'm not out of school, but um, one of the comments I got from the dealers were the interiors were just so dated, it was hard to keep people inside long enough to tell the story about Winnebago, all the other great things you're doing with, with safety and quality. And so uh, we went out and, and were fortunate to get Kim on the team. Um, She's done a, a great job um, and just really, really getting um, some of our, you know, not just the new products, but you, if you look at our Class A gas product with the Adventure and the Vista, uh, those have all fresh new interiors. Uh, the, with the work she's done on Mini Winnie and Spirit um, as well. So it's it's great to have her here. It's just a, a lot of really cool ideas, very thoughtful. Um, and quite honestly, you know, so many of, of our customer purchase decisions get made by a woman. Um, and to have Kim's viewpoint there um, is invaluable that way. We're seeing um, a lot of single mothers, um, especially when you get into the View and Navion product. Um, we think Echo um, will be big with, with um, single women as well. And it's just um, to have Kim's insight, you know, and, and view 
um, from that of that that viewpoint, and then her high end residential has made a big difference. We've had um, a lot of positive feedback, both from consumers and viewers, as to the steps we're taking. Yep, uh, and if we want to. Did I just see an echo interior? Yeah, let me pull up that and, and comment on that also because I didn't think we didn't think I had the echo. I don't know where John went, but maybe we'll get him back. Yeah. But, but that's the uh, echo interior. Yep. So we um, we tried to keep it very functional. It's a little bit um, a little bit rubblish, um, similar to the uh, some of the some of the seating we've done with Solus, you know, on the three point um, seating areas. Um, so it's yeah, we we wanted to be um, I wouldn't say minimalistic, but tried to be clean. And, and more of a European design um, with this interior, make it very functional. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see what else we have here. Um, let's talk a little bit about towables because you mentioned the the mini, uh, and and you that got a lot of play today on the show in terms of some of the improvements that you've made there. Really done. Um, you know, a lot of it too is is focused on the interiors, just trying to get you know a, a cleaner look um, on the inside, more of a residential look. Um, the team has spent a lot of time on the mini product. Um, the micro mini product has been fantastic, seven foot wide, you know, nice turning radiance radius, um, a safe you know an easy first timer type of vehicle as well. Um, so yeah, the micro mini product's done great. Um, hike is is taken off really well. So yeah, we're very, very happy um, on the travel trailer portion and then the voyage is, is up on the high end. But again, and, and Kim has not played um, with the towable product yet. Um, she has not gotten involved there. Um, that's obviously something, you know, as we talk to the team, we'll look at and see if, if that makes some sense to structure a little bit that way. But um, no, we're it's, it's exciting. It's in a good spot, but again, it's got a, a lot of runway um, in the towable business for us. Let's talk a little bit more about the hike. Right. Uh, and you can see the W logo on, on the back uh, left-hand side there. But this had a little bit of redesign. I know you changed the outside system. Maybe uh, talk a little bit about that because this is kind of like the uh, the Rebel for the trailer for Rebel fans. Somebody that didn't want to get the Rebel, but this is this is your outdoor enthusiast trailer. It is, and we we've actually had a couple people that have Rebels that now have hikes that they're they're pulling behind the Rebel. Oh. Um, it's the exoskeleton. We patented that design. Um, you know, obviously, want people to be able to. We, you know, people asked us, hey, when when COVID happened and people were working from the road, did you design product to allow them to work from the road? We wanted to enable it. We don't want to pick. You know, here's your here's your where your laptop goes, or here's where you know that your Wi-Fi connector is going to be. But really, trying to enable. That's what we did with Hike. Was let's give people an exoskeleton. And they can decide how they use it. If they want to hook up bikes, throw kayaks on top, canoes, you know, whatever, different sleeping, you know, arrangements, stuff like that. So it's um, yeah, it's been great. It's it's taken off. Um, we're looking at what else we can do with this product because again, we think we we found a a good consumer niche here. Um, so we're looking at different things we can do um, in terms of, of the hike product to provide a few more options. Interesting. So very much based on that that rebel, you know, rugged nomad type of product. yeah. Welcome back, John. I part of my contract says I have to take a break every twenty minutes. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go up the scale here. Adam Parks says, "Will there be an RV show in 2021 in Boston?" Adam, we hope so. We moved it from we January. All hope so. <laughs> yeah, we all hope so. We moved it from January to April, 15 to 18, uh, at the BCEC. So stay tuned on that and. You know, it's really out of our hands. It depends on the governor. It depends on the BCEC. But if we have anything to say about it, I had another meeting with Paragon on uh, Friday, uh, Thursday, and uh, last Tuesday, rather. And, and we are definitely planning a show for Boston. So watch our website for that. Uh, Jim's going to be funny. Nice video, Bob. I'm going to try it again, Jim. That thing worked four times today. So, uh, uh, hey, I got a question for Brian. And yeah. About the event today, Brian, you said that you had sold a couple of the um, couple of the new Echoes. Um, any other comments that dealers are making about um, today's event as to um, what they thought about the product changes and um, additions to the lineup? Yeah, no, it was, um, Bob, extremely positive. We did a dealer event uh, 
So that was a password just for our dealers to come in and see the product. It was about a half an hour long um, and just had a ton of great feedback. And we honestly, when, when we understood that we weren't going to have the normal show season this year to get product in front of our dealers and consumers, we didn't know how to do a virtual launch. We hadn't done it before. Um, and obviously, you know, Numar went ahead of us and, and others. And we, you know, we watched to see what people did, but um, just very pleased, uh, you know, the work the team did. Um, you don't know how much goes into uh, trying to create a, a video event. It's not just holding up the iPhone. So um, really excited about that. Then when we did the consumer event, um, which was a little over an hour and a half long, it was fun because you could follow along with the chat and the comments. Um, and everybody had their favorite thing. You know, we started with class A and all the class B people said, you know, when, when are we going to get to this? But really um, a ton of positive on the journey, on the Echo. Um, we obviously always get a big Travato and Revel following. Um, so it was, um, it, was, it was really positive. A lot of comments on interior design. Um, I think we've got a home run with the Echo. Feel really good about that. Um, a lot of positive comments about us getting back you know, and expanding our diesel lineup um, with the journey. So that was, that was good as well. And, and quite honestly, a lot of positive comments on the content and the way we did things. Um, we went out and, and shot just a lot of beautiful video. Um, and what we want to do is now we're going to take a lot of these assets we created and provide them to our dealers because we don't want our dealers to have to go recreate. Let's do this once, get it to our dealers, help them with the messaging um, and really make it, you know, an even better experience for the, uh, the consumer that way. Well, so what, it was, um, I, I was very, very pleased with how today went. Yeah. And one of the things that you did, uh, and I found out just shortly after that, uh, for people who want to see more, if you go out to YouTube, you, you've taken segments of that and you right. have a separate video on the Echo and the Journey and one on Towable. So there, if you look at the, if you just uh, search on the road ahead, I think most of them are classified the road ahead. So you can see the different segments that they took from the unveiling today. And the unveiling itself is still on YouTube. So I'll post the, I'll post the link to uh, the total unveiling because I think that's still live, yeah, right, Frank? Right? Yeah, it is. Yep. No, that'd be that'd be great. Yeah, we'll we'll post that up uh, to do that. All right. Um, Andy, let's see. Jim says Tampa show is on as of now. Yes, it is. Tampa show is January thirteen to seventeen, and that is still on. Uh, and and, 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 um, and if the show does go on, we will be there. Again, we're going to follow the direction you know, of the state and the show organizers in terms of people and staffing and be very careful. But um, we will be representative, in fact, the show goes forward. Yep, and you always have a big display down there, too. So, okay. So looking looking forward um, is another picture of the uh, motorhome assembly line. What, what else should people be looking forward to from Winnebago going forward? I think the next thing, um, you know, we're working right now on our uh, Class A gas product line. Um, so I think you're gonna you're gonna see some new um, new product coming with the Vista and Adventure uh, nameplates on it. We're gonna continue with on the Class B side. There's um, there's obviously you know more more chassis options for us. Um, we're gonna continue to, to update Revel and Travato as we go forward. Um, the diesel line, you know, we have Forza and Journey now. Um, we're looking at you know what are some other places that we could go, um, quite honestly, there. Um, and just continuing, you know, the, the interior focus for us, connectivity is going to be another place. You know, the journey is the first coach that uh, for us is coming out with connect coach. So you basically have an app that can, that can run everything that is traditionally run on the panels um, on the inside of the unit. And we see connectivity as another place that the consumers want us to go. Uh, they don't want to have seven or eight or ten different apps. They'd like to have you know one Winnebago Connect app, um, so we're going to put put more effort there. Um, and then the digital side, um, it's it's something that COVID I think accelerated. Um, how do you you know the digital shopping experience, uh, digital interface with the consumer? How are we supporting the dealers and getting the dealers the information that they need? Um, so we're putting a lot just from a if I look at a capex budget, um, a significant number of of dollars are going into our our digital transformation. And then, yeah, you leaked our new uh, our new Class A product there on the bottom. So, huh? <laughs> that, that was on your. I think that was on your site. <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was up. It was uh, one of the photos we used. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Winnebago has this incredible history going back to the '60s, and we had some of the early dealers here in in New England, and it's it's amazing. But you know, a lot of people didn't realize that 
the, you were in trailers and, and then you were out of trailers, but they actually started with the trailers and then went into the motorhomes. Yeah, modernistic uh, industries when it came to Iowa started as a, as a trailer manufacturing uh, company. And then um, if, if I have the story correct, there was a pretty significant fire at Winnebago. Um, and then after the plant was rebuilt, the, uh, the focus moved over to the motorhome business. Um, and now obviously with Winnebago's total business in, in Middle Belt, Middle Belt in Indiana, um, you know, we're back, back into that business in a pretty significant way. Well, you know, we, we, we often tell the story when we're with Winnebago people that if you go back to the Brave, the original Brave, we had a dealer up here in New England who is, I think they're looking to get back into the Winnebago line, but Longview RV, which was formed in Fran and Shirley Roberts in 1959. They were on the Mohawk Trail, which- Route two. Route two out in Western Massachusetts. In the early 60s, Brian, they were selling 55 Braves a month. Wow. A month. And they were and they were not on the Mass Pike. The Mass Pike hadn't been built. There weren't any big highways out there, but that's that was their claim to fame back then, and they did a great job. It was a great dealership. Uh, their son, Frank, uh, Frank runs it uh, now. Uh, Andy says for Brian. I, I have an answer to that, but go ahead. Go ahead. I want to. Well, you, wanna, ask it, you ask it and you answer it. Go ahead. Well, you know, our friend Andy asks you, Brian, are you concerned with the COVID RV sales spike that once a vaccine is widely available, that a glut of units could appear? Now, go ahead, answer that. And then I want to I want to yeah. reference the KOA report about that. Yeah, I don't, um, you know, a, a glut, no. Um, are there people that tried an RV that are going to say, you know what, it wasn't for me? Yeah, there'll, there'll be some of that. Um, you know, our, our challenge right now is we think, and we hear this anecdotally from dealers, about 50% of the traffic that they're seeing are first-time buyers um, that are coming into the industry. Um, what we have to do is keep them in the industry. Um, yeah. And that's a lot great. of that's product, but a lot of that's going to be service. Uh, but the good now. news, Brian, and, and we'll break it now, even though we broke it last week, but we'll break it to this audience. Um, that KOA camping report that Toby O'Rourke just presented last week, what was the was at the RVD conference was yep. that 85 percent of the people that camped in 2020 will be coming back in 2021 and the big factor that Bob and I talked about back in in June when the red light when the green light got put back on is that this puts more pressure than ever on the industry to keep them in the fold so that 2021 doesn't see a lot of I tried it. I hate it. You buy it. I don't care how much money I lose. Would you agree with that, Brian? That that was a yeah, no. I wouldn't do it. I think that's that's critical. Is is keeping those people that you know that like the lifestyle, um, you know, keeping them in the lifestyle with a good ownership process. And I, you know, you look at it just in, from a manufacturer standpoint. Dealer inventory today is still at very very low levels, um, and most of you know we've never seen the number. The percentage of products that are coming off our line that already have a retail customer name on. Yep. And always with our dealers, we're trying to prioritize what we call retail sold all the time, and that percentage has continued to grow. So, you know, we 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 have to get the channel back um, and get and get it with the right kind of inventory for the dealers because it's hard right now being a dealer, and um, it, it's it's just unbelievable as you as you drive by some of these dealerships, the low level of product they have on there. But no, I I think you know, Andy, there'll be people that tried it and don't like it. Um, and they'll, they'll unfortunately do something else. But, um, you know, we've had just a, if we look at the community groups on social media, um, if we look at memberships into our, what we call the WIT Club, the Winnebago International Travelers Club, our, our owners club, all that is trending in the right direction. And I think you see that's where um, a lot of our focus too is on on the shorter motorhomes, class B, class C. That's where a lot of these first time buyers are coming in. They feel more comfortable uh, driving something of, of that size as well. So. We're in, a, uh, we're in a good spot right now. Very fortunate and, and want to take advantage. You know, one of the issues that, not issues, but one of the circumstances that we saw last year camping up in Maine is uh, at this particular campground that we were at was that um, it had a lot of, this is Bailey's up in Maine, and they had a lot of um, units that were rentals, but that were already on site. And the thing that we found is a lot of the people that, um, came with RV owners that rented 
mm-hmm. you know, you know, and they would try to put them, you know, close to each other. A lot of those renters were turning into buyers based upon the lifestyle that they found at this particular campground. And, um, you know, I think the challenge has been met to get people into camping. So we've got them there. And like Walter says, campsites, uh, campground stock, parts and service, et cetera, are going to be issues that keep them there. But, um, you know, we've got them there. So from the aspect of keeping them there, those those issues are going to be important to challenge. Well, I, I can tell you, too, there was a, a dealer panel on the RVDA uh, Expo convention this week. And the industry is in tune with that problem. I mean, one could argue that five years ago they weren't paying enough attention to it. But with the repair event cycle time, with the emphasis on customer service and everybody in this industry from the Mike Happies and the Bob Martins and the Pete Legals down to the the repairman, the technician at your local dealership is well aware that the biggest challenge for this industry in 2021 is customer retention, customer satisfaction, customer retention. Yeah. And Bob, you just used a term that I think is used a lot in corporate levels, in in corporate talk, where you say from Mike Happy and Bob Martin down to the tech at the dealership, when in reality, the tech at the dealership is the face of the manufacturer. Nobody knows who Mike Happy is. Nobody knows legal and nobody <laughs> knows, you know, they all know Doug, but, um, you know, they don't know Brian. They don't, the face of the W is the person at the dealership. Would you agree with me on that, Brian? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's, again, it gets back to, you know, we've got to make that dealer um, look as good as we can by getting them the right parts, the right information, the right tools, the right training, because that's what we're, we're relying on that. You know, we're, we're taking this flying W and entrusting the dealer to, okay, you go represent us now. You know, we Keep can design this own products and build beautiful interiors and yep. do all those things. But at the end of the day, it's the dealer that's gonna, gonna get the customer to, to buy and is gonna yep. keep the customer in the lifestyle with great service. Yeah, and that's why, you know, our VTI is, is absolutely critical that they get these people into um you know into this career as as a tech and uh, what was the other one we talked about last week with uh, the inspectors academy Na- national rv national rv training academy and right. the national rv inspectors right. academy uh, down terry cooper down in texas yep you know and there are a lot of and brian made the point earlier too about Mobile techs, the, the, the newfound respect, and we need them as much as we need everybody else because they're going to be going on site. And and in fact, uh, one of the things that's happening is all of these warranty and insurance companies, uh, they are also aware that their their reputation is going to be based on how quickly they get people fixed and, and back on the road. So they're subscribing to these mobile techs and independent techs. So it's it's, it could be that kind of person that shows up when you're on the side of the road because they happen to be close by, they happen to be trained, and they'll be out there quickly. So the industry is doing a lot of things. It's not to say we're not going to continue to hiccup, but we're going to be a lot better than we were five years ago. We're going to be a hell of a lot better than we were 10 years ago from, from an industry standpoint. And, you know, I'm glad, you know, Brian works very close. Brian and his team works very closely with our dealers, and we got Dwayne on the other end doing – doing the training. He does a great job and we get people out there as often as we can. Yeah. Do you have any idea when you start training back up at the factory? Is it still going to be remote for quite a while or? Probably still going to be remote for a little while. Um, it really depends on, you know, what's um, what the state of Iowa, um, you know, allows us to do. Um, but no, we, I think training is huge. And, and quite honestly, I, I don't think we've done the job that we, we used to do. I think we did a really good job. You know, you, you mentioned the salespeople coming to North Iowa and spending a week and going through Big Bertha and, you know, getting indoctrinated. Um, and I think, you know, in 08, 09, that might have backed off a little bit. But that's really what we asked Dwayne to do um, when we put him into that leadership role for training was to rebuild the training programs now. And we actually have four trainers um, that are out with our dealers uh, throughout the country. And um, I, I, would, I would add trainers before I added salespeople um, all day long. Hey, Brian, let me just tell you one thing, and he didn't tell us to say this, and he's probably going to be mad at me for saying this, but, you know, whenever we have anything going on corporate-wise, Dwayne is always the first to call us and say, hey, guys, 
What do you need? What can I do? Um, it's not will you this. It's not will you do this for me, but it's what do you need? And um, you know, I know this summer I bought. I had a unit out for um, for observation, and on Saturday night at nine o'clock, something went wrong, and I just happened to call him, uh, expecting to get voicemail, and he called. He was there, and he walked me through it. But I mean, even tonight before this, he called and said, look, do you need pictures? Do you need anything? And wow. I think it's important that you folks at the mothership know what's going on in the field because, um, you know, that's, that's what you have there with Dwayne. I thank you for that because it's, um, you know, all too often you don't get the good stories, you get the rough ones. Oh. And uh, Dwayne, is a, <laughs> Dwayne is a critical part of our team. Um, and just the work that he's done from a training standpoint has been invaluable and, and it's going to get better and better. And it's great to have somebody like Dwayne that can mentor, you know, if we hire a new person into a training role and they get a mentor like, you know, Dwayne Cyrus, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Hey Bob, we're almost at the end, but you know what we might want to do? We want to take a moment to tell everybody that this show has been brought to us by our local sponsor, Lee's Family Trailer Sales in Wyndham, Maine right off Interstate 95, where you can go from Maine to Florida. And they have the full lineup of Winnebago products that will be available there. And probably many of the units that we talked about tonight will be available at Lee's family trailer. Yeah, they do a great job. Uh, they, they've been, uh, Dan bought the dealership three years ago, and he has tripled the size of the dealership in three years and he's brought on all the name brands he's got winnebago he's got grand design uh he's a good good dealer and they are very customer focused they they don't leave the customers hanging and he you yeah. came out of the boating industry but he certainly gravitated and and got in tune with the rv industry yeah. really quickly and the, the people really like him and we thank him for sponsoring the show tonight let me ask this brian brian have you ever seen a show where where the intelligence level of the audience has been this high, where they asked, you know, legitimate, honest questions because they, they're RVers that love RVing. And uh, no, no, this, has been, this has been an awesome experience. I, I appreciate you guys asking me. It's been, they've been great questions. And let, me get, a, uh, let me just read, read one, first. one more from, one quick one from Andy. Now that your designer has done such a nice job with the new class A model, will she have, so she has the opportunity to put a fingerprint and design touch on a new class B model. I, uh, I, Kim suspect, is, she'll, I suspect she'll touch everything, right? Yeah, she touches everything. Uh, Kim's involved in, in the class B design. If we come up with a new model for class B, yeah, absolutely. She works really closely with Russ. They have a great working relationship. Um, and it's uh, it's great. It's good to have you know somebody as creative as Russ is, and then he has somebody like Kim that he can lean on. Uh, to get the interiors right. So yeah, Kim will continue to be involved in our interior. How, how's this? How often do you have the competition complement your employees? Kevin, Kevin's a, Kevin is another, Kevin Hiroki is another tremendous rep. He's our Cougar rep in the Northeast and he, he is outstanding in his own right. But he says, nice compliment on Dwayne Cyrus, great guy and hard worker, worked with him indirectly for years. So Kevin, uh, we, Kevin, we know we don't say those things just because it's the it's the good political thing to say because there are plenty of people that we have gone to corporate with and said you know um, that person comes to a show and, and sits in an RV and doesn't talk to anybody um, you know if you're going to have corporate people out in the field the people need to know they're there and they well you froze up John uh, but the story the story that I tell on Kevin you know in you've seen it too Brian we have all these consumer shows and I look for the manufacturers reps who are there supporting our dealers and I make sure that I go over and greet them and see how our dealers are doing and what they need from Nervda and at the last Boston show some of these reps have a habit of leaving let's shall we say a little bit early yeah like two days early because they want to fly home I, I found Kevin working the display for our dealer at when the show was ending, Kevin was still helping the dealer write deals. And That's I got that. one comment for Andy Park. We enjoyed your comments, Andy, but that smart guy comment about 64 degrees in Orlando, when we're up here at half of that, 
is not welcome at all, Andy. So you're going to be on the banned list for next show. <laughs> we'll block them. Did you have something to say about Kevin or, or refs there, Brian, before I cut you off? No, I was just, Kevin, thanks for the compliment. Dwayne's a, a great guy, and um, we really appreciate the work he does, and, and thanks for, uh, for calling that out as well. All right. Well, we always try to end it pretty close to eight because we respect the time, and we they even say good night to us when we get done. So, <laughs> so, thank you, very, Brian. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Always a pleasure seeing you. And, and in fact, people don't know, you were the last show in event that John and I went to when we went to the National Dealer meeting in March. And when we said goodbye to you guys on Thursday night, nobody knew that the world was going to fall apart on Friday. Yeah, that was a pretty strong goodbye now that we look back at it. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. All right. Thanks All right, for having me. Thank you very much. We'll see you. Uh, we will not see you next week. We will not. We don't do a show the night before Thanksgiving. So enjoy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you back here in December. And yeah. Walter, I got to call you. So that's that. Have yeah. a great day, everybody. Bye now. Thank you.